luminous and beautiful, a star has appeared on the edge of the cosmic dawn that raises questions. The oldest single star ever discovered was identified by the James Webb Telescope as too bright and too big. Does this star also have what it takes to overturn our previous cosmological worldview? Or is there a completely plausible explanation for this observation? Come along as we dive into an exciting dimension of space exploration together. James Webb is on the trail of the beginnings of the cosmos. The James Webb Space Telescope has heralded the beginning of a new era in space exploration. In just a few weeks of work, the Cosmic Infrared Observatory has already discovered several galaxies that challenge the Big Bang Theory and our models of galactic evolution. And now, Webb has turned its instruments toward the most distant, isolated star in the universe, Erendel. The distance to Erendel is 12.9 billion light years. If the Big Bang Theory is correct, Erendel existed when the universe was only 900 million years old. Thus, the star could belong to a rare population of protostars that astronomers have been searching for over half a century. It was a true stroke of luck that this star could be discovered at all. Until now, the smallest objects observed at these distances were star clusters and distant galaxies. Erendel is the first isolated star found at such a large distance. It was discovered not by James Webb, but by the Hubble Space Telescope. Hubble first observed the star's parent galaxy, which was optically enhanced by the gravity of a cluster in the foreground. Massive astronomical objects like clusters of galaxies distort the space-time matter around them like a convex magnifying glass. As a result of this distortion, light from celestial bodies in the foreground virtually bends out of the way and objects in the background become not only visible, but greatly magnified. Scientists call this phenomenon the gravitational lensing effect. Because of this gravitational lensing effect, foreground clusters can magnify the light from individual stars by thousands of factors. The magnifying effect distorted the background galaxy with Erendel like an arc, which eventually led to the beautiful name Sunrise Arc Galaxy. From the cluster of stars, thanks to the bending, an object was pushed out of the mass, and at the very edge appeared the star that caused a sensation Erendel, the star of the dawn. Too big, too bright, too impossible? Light sources in distant galaxies like novae, supernovae, or tidal perturbations caused by black holes tend to change their brightness over time. However, Hubble's observations showed that the brightness of this object remained constant for three and a half years. From this, the researchers were able to deduce that it was indeed a gravitationally lensed bright single star in the Sunrise Arc Galaxy. The discovery was akin to finding a single tiny grain of gold on a beach full of yellow sand grains. However, due to its wavelength limitations, Hubble could provide only limited information about this distant star. So astronomers couldn't wait to point the new James Webb telescope at Erendel and finally learn more about the oldest star ever seen by man. Leading the study is Dr. Brian Welsh of John Hopkins University. Welsh and his team had discovered Erendel in March 2022 in Hubble telescope data and named it after a mystical dawn deity. In their study, the researchers now presented brand new images of Erendel taken with Webb's near-cam instrument. Erendel was studied in eight different Webb filters. With each filter, having an exposure time of over half an hour. These wavelength ranges span from 0.8 to 5 microns. First, the scientists use the redshift to once again confirm Erendel's age and distance. The redshift of objects in deep space provides a measure of their distance. As light travels through the cosmos, it's stretched. The longer it's been traveling, the more the light spectrum skews into the red regions. For this reason, in images like this, the red objects are certainly the oldest and the bright to bluish ones are the closest. The redshift is represented by a dimensionless quantity z. z equals zero marks the present, and the higher its value, the greater the look-back time and distance to that object. The number determined by James Webb agrees with the Hubble telescope data, and Erendel's title as the star with the highest redshift ever observed was confirmed. The next important property of Urendel is its bolometric magnitude. In physics, bolometric magnitude 
is the total electromagnetic spectrum of energy emitted by a star. Here, James Webb was able to provide far better data than Hubble had previously. Using the new data, it became clear that this was a B-type star with an effective surface temperature of 13,000 to 16,000 Kelvin. O-type stars are the hottest, with surface temperatures exceeding 30,000 Kelvin, while M-type stars are the coolest, with surface temperatures of about 2,400 to 3,700 Kelvin. Oddly, however, the total luminosity of Erendel is between 600,000 and 1 million times stronger than the luminosity of the Sun. Thus, the mass of Erendel must be about 40 times that of the Sun. These values resulted in difficulties in the scales of the highest possible luminosity of a single star measured by its size. Scientists therefore came up with the idea that Erendel actually consists of two stars. Alternatively, the light could be produced by two stars of 30 solar masses each, or five stars of 20 solar masses, assuming a surface temperature of about 15,000 Kelvin. The spectral energy distribution could also indicate a multiple star system in which three or more stars dance around a common center. Massive stars, which we know from the nearest neighborhood of the universe, even have companions very often, which is due to their large gravitational attraction. The stellar giants collect the nearest stars in the course of millions or billions of years by pulling them towards them. Unfortunately, it will be nearly impossible to detect Erendel companion stars at this distance. Even the advanced capabilities of the James Webb Telescope won't help. Researchers can say with reasonable certainty that Erendel is not alone, but proof of this assumption must remain elusive. The purely hypothetical evidence for the assumption currently relies on the Humphreys-Davidson limit, or the HD limit for short. With a luminosity one million times more luminous than that of the Sun, E. Rendell would break this limit as a single star, and this is unlikely. So far, no star in the known universe has been observed to scratch the empirical luminosity limit. If, contrary to expectations, E. Rendell is confirmed to be a single star shining a million times brighter than the sun, scientists would have to reconsider the HD limit and set new values. A population three star? The discovery of E. Rendell is of utmost importance to the international community of astronomers for an entirely different reason. Its massive age could potentially make it the first true observation of a population three star. Astronomers have been searching for these hypothetical stars of the young universe for decades. Population three stars are what scientists call the first generation of stars in the universe that were born from the primordial hydrogen and helium. If previous calculations are correct, these stars should be characterized by an extremely low metallicity since they were formed before the formation of heavy elements. These stars would be of special interest to science since they can provide fundamental insights into cosmic evolution. Population three stars, according to previous theories, would have formed shortly after the Big Bang and set in motion the nucleosynthesis process that formed the first chemical elements in space. The low metallicity of these stars is a basic assumption of the previous star formation theories, and it influenced the further star evolution and the formation of whole galaxies until today. So far, no one has discovered such a star. Population three stars are a part of the Big Bang theory and the calculations describing what happened after the Big Bang and how the cosmos evolved. If real stars of this type were available, it would be possible for the first time to build concrete models of star formation and evolution and to reconstruct cosmic history. Since most population three stars must be long extinct, they are difficult to find. It wasn't until gravitational lensing made it possible to observe objects so far away that scientists began to hope that population three stars might one day actually be found. No wonder then that there was great excitement when researchers announced the Rendell's find and that excitement was even greater when James Webb hit the ground running. Now, James Webb's observations have dealt a blow to the world of astronomy right at the start. At the previously assumed edge of the universe, six very old galaxies appeared that judging by previous cosmological models should not actually exist. They existed only a few hundred million years after the Big Bang and in this time, there cannot have been much more than first stars in the cosmos, according to common theories. 
scientists are currently very sensitive to reconsider old values and opinions about the nature of the cosmos and its limits because of these findings and the whole uncertain situation in astrophysics. The data from Erendel must therefore also be treated with caution. It may be that this star, too, has what it takes to add a whole new dimension to previous astronomy. Even more precise measurements of Urendel's brightness and surface temperature could better constrain the type of star and its stage in the life cycle. Because little is known about population three stars, researchers also do not know, for example, how such a star behaves towards the end of its life. Today's large stars blow up into red giants over millions of years. Perhaps Urendel's extreme luminosity could be explained by a phenomenon like this. Astronomers expect Erendel to be visible in the night sky for many years to come and remain highly magnified. The object will therefore likely still be the focus of many new studies and measurements. The next observation of Erendel with the James Webb Telescope is already planned. And of course, the scientists around Dr. Brian Welsh are eagerly anticipating that data. With a new calibration of the telescope, Welsh and his team will try to obtain even more accurate data of Urendel's age, mass, and luminosity after all. Perhaps by the end of this observing period, we will be closer to finding a solution to the question of the wondrous single star or a stellar system. During this observing period, astronomers will also take a closer look at the Sunrise Arc Galaxy. If measurements within the galaxy are successful, the determined values could also allow conclusions about Urendel. The presence of light elements would confirm previous assumptions and increase the likelihood that Erendel is a very rare, high-mass, metal-poor star. But what do you think about this star, which is the oldest humans have ever seen? Do you think scientists can find a plausible explanation for its extreme luminosity? Or is Erendel the gateway to a whole new dimension of stellar exploration?